you know what a day in the life of a doctor in a war zone is like? My name is Dr. Sajo Islam. In this video, I'm going to be taking you with me on a typical shift as I work as an anesthetic stroke ICU doctor in one of the main trauma hospitals in Idlib, Syria. We'll be dealing with major emergencies covering the emergency department as well as managing my patients in the intensive care unit. This is a low resource war zone. We'll be covering procedures like intubation, like CV lines and other advanced stabilizing procedures we're carrying out daily in this war zone. You'll be seeing some of the challenges we face with the low resources we have and the difficulties of working ridiculously long shifts. If you like content like this, follow my channel and put in the comment section below what more things you want to see from us. Make sure to give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe and tick that bell button so that you're notified of all new content. My shift starts with a handover. Today I have a total of eight patients. Three of them are now stable enough to discharge and the remaining five still need a lot of work. From them, I have three patients on ventilators and two of them off ventilators. We are rushed to the resuscitation bay as we have an emergency case. It's me and my team of doctors that deal and lead all resuscitations in the hospital. Right now we have a five-year-old child with clear head injuries. It's obvious this child needs intubation. He's traveled over one hour to reach a hospital, during which he's vomited and aspirated. Ideally, we should be doing a RSI, a rapid sequence induction. But unfortunately, because we don't have the medications required for RSI, the process of intubation becomes very long and very risky. Majority of the drugs that we do have don't work properly. Most of our drugs are expired. One of our junior doctors is going to be taking lead to do this intubation whilst I'll be supervising him. Alhamdulillah, he successfully intubates. Now we have a urgent task to wash the lungs out and take out all of those aspirated secretions. The patient is rapidly deteriorating. 
and we make a quick decision to do a CV line. Now some of that deterioration is because of the drugs we're using for anesthesia and in induction because of the limited drugs we have. And the other aspect of it is a serious head injury he has. When uh, are you going to go? Maybe. Maybe I'm going to go. I said, no, 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 My second junior doctor is going to be taking lead doing the CV line. CV lines can be very tricky in young children. But my team is very experienced in doing CV lines as some days we end up doing five or six CV lines in one day. This CV line is more difficult than expected. Listen. And unfortunately, my junior doctor has failed in doing it. So here I'll be taking over and completing the process. Bismillah. Our patient has been stabilized and rushed into the intensive care unit. We've had to put him on inotropes and we've started transfusing blood. Now, after stabilizing our patient, we are reviewing his CT and making a management plan in consultation with the neurosurgeons. Doctor, I want to talk about the number of people who want to talk about the number of people who want to talk about the number of people. After dealing with such a long emergency, it's time to get some food and try to rest and have a nap because I've got a long shift ahead of me. Me and my team of junior doctors are busy writing up the discharge summaries and getting up to scratch with the management of the patients. Everything good, bro? Listen, uh, hey, listen, I'm just gonna go up here and then I'll give you a call, yeah? Give me about five minutes. Please. Alright, yellow, so I've just been contacted by the reception to inform me that there's a transfer from another hospital. It's going to take about an hour and a half for this ICU patient to be transferred to us. So now I know I need to use this time to have dinner before it starts getting busy again. Alright, welcome to the podcast. Glad you're in with us today. 
Thank you for the main program. Many of you have not met me yet. Um, I look forward to meeting you. But let's dive into what we're talking about today. Allodynia is pain out of normal sensation. So the sense uh, is something on fire or like outer portion of the, of the uh, outer epidural sheath. Now been called to an emergency. The five-year-old child, Ahmed, who we admitted into the ICU not long ago, is deteriorating rapidly. The neurosurgeons have requested another CT scanner. I need to go and see him. SubhanAllah, things go from bad to worse as his ET tube is accidentally taken out. Let him go, Jai Zakhi. Jai Zakhi, let him go. Mask, wind mask. Now is an emergency to reintegrate him. Bismillah. And this could be very challenging in sick children like this. أخي أنت أنت ركز معي الأكسجين أعطي أكسجين ما تنفس تمام يلا هلا مشكلة للأطفال إذا بيتلا تيوب أغلبية الأطفال بيصير وزمة للهنجرة صعب جدا للنب مرة تانية إذا بيتنب مرة تانية جايز تيوب أصغر من أول واحد أول كان أربعة ونص معناته لازم جايز أربعة جايز بسم الله يلا سكشن أخي وين صوت اعلى شيء بالصدر اكيد تمام احيانا لو حتى المعدي بيسمع صوت الصدر هذا سبب نحن بيسمع خمسة مكان وشوف أي مكان أعلى شيء إذا المادي أعلى شيء يكون المادي ولكن يسمع صوت الصدر كمان هذا سبب إذا بس يسمع صدر غلط تمام مو مش الحال أبدا تمام خلي ثبت تمام إن شاء الله إسكيب إسكيب الحرج إلى إس إم في مود إس إم في فوليوم كنترول حتى الم أخي فتحت المنفصل ما بين ما هيصير تمام اخي تمام هلا بيجي ان شاء الله جزاك الله خير هاي اخي هات شيء تحته مشان يكون في مشان نقل طبقه واشيل من طبقه وهيك دكتور شوف هذا الورق this elderly gentleman has been transferred from another hospital. He has an acute abdomen. Me and the surgical team are now working together to find a management plan for him. He is really elderly with multiple problems, but he needs urgent surgery for which he's just not fit right now.
For now, he will be monitored in our intensive care unit. The nucleus pulposus itself uh, is highly endowed with arachidonic acid uh, mediated uh, 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 components, and so when it leaks out onto the nerve root, it, it causes inflammation, which is sort of a, a bad design, if you ask me, that you put something that, that is highly inflammatory. So much for trying to sleep. It's hard when I try to build up an emergency. It's six o'clock in the morning. Uh, I've been working for 22 hours flat out. No breaks, no breaks, no working full on. You have to be ready 24 hours. And just when I thought I'm gonna get some sleep, just when I thought I'm gonna get some sleep, uh, I didn't have an emergency to deal with. And you know what? I'm still on shift. So if you wanted to see in a day in the life of a doctor in a war zone, if you wanted to see a day in the life of me, it's not a day, it's not a day. Our days are not 24 hours. Our days are like 48 hours, 72 hours, and that's how long my shifts are. I'm still on shift today, and I ain't had no sleep. That little nap I tried to have, which was disturbed because of an emergency, that's it. So you can imagine I'm really struggling, really struggling.